Please stand. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that all who believe in him might not perish, but may have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and invisible God, who dispersed the darkness of this world by the coming of your light. Look, we pray, with the serene countenance upon us, that we may acclaim with fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth 
is not in him. But whoever keep his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard, and yet I do write a new commandment to you which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness, and he does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all your lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations. Among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens. His splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are in his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A light of revelation to the Gentiles. And glory for your people Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, 
and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. As we journey or pilgrim through this octave of Christmas, we are introduced to many people and reintroduced, of course. But largely, we are in the company of martyrs. Why, when we celebrate a feast, a festival, we are then immediately introduced to martyrs. Why is that? Is that a distraction to us? It used to be to me. I would ask the question, but never go any further than that. But certainly in the mind of the church <clears throat> and in the mind of God, <clears throat> there is a sacred connection between feasting and martyrdom. And that is established right in front of you in the altar here. In the sacred altar, in the festival table, there are the relics of the martyrs. The two are intimately related. As soon as you walk onto the ground here, you know, you are acquainted with the martyrs. This part of your life. Why, why are the two so close? Why do we have festival and eating and martyrdom? When I was very young, I read a book called uh, Dying We Live. It was a series of letters that were connect collected by people who were facing death in the Nazi era. They had received a sentence. They knew certainly exactly when they would die and they wrote these letters. Now today, looking back, they were inspiring to me, but now today, looking back with this sacred connection between martyrdom and festival, I describe their lives in terms of the explosion of love. An explosion of love. Little did the judges who sentenced those Christians, as they were, to death. Little did they know that they were creating in that courtroom an explosion of love. 
And that same sentiment echoes in each of our hearts today. Some of you I know are related to martyrs. I know you are. We all are in some ways. People say there's only what many degrees of separation between us and any other person in the world. So they are part of our life and our family. And in a short few moments, we will commemorate their presence in our midst. And so now at the table of the martyrs, we present our needs and our petitions. We pray for the church. May Christ continue to illuminate her, her path to unity throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord for political leaders of every nation. May the humble birth of Jesus inspire a renewed commitment to peace building and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering or burdened with difficulties, may the hope found in the Lord's faithfulness and promise bring them consolation and joy let us pray to the Lord. For those assembled here, may the Holy Spirit guide us in becoming an ever more forgiving and gracious people. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died. May the Lord shine his face upon them and grant them eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are daily committed to our prayers, Antonio Rodriguez, we pray also in a special way today for Pope Benedict, we pray to the Lord. And for those for the intention of this Mass, for John Baptist Darwin, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we entrust ourselves to you. By living as faithful followers of your Son, we ask that you hear these prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. May it become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. 
receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna.